Olayinka Habert Samuel Badmus Macaulay was born on Monday, November 14, 1864, in Lagos to Thomas Babington Macaulay and Abigail Crowder, the second daughter of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, as the fifth of seven children. Macaulay was born six days after Republican President Abraham Lincoln defeated Democrat General George B. McClellan in the United States presidential election to serve a second term in the White House. It was also the same year his maternal grandfather, Samuel Ajayi Crowder, became the first African bishop of the Church of England, popularly known as the Anglican Church. Macaulay's paternal grandfather, Ojo Oriari, a native doctor, was from Oyo and a descendant of Alafin Abiodun. He and his wife, Kilangbe, were enslaved but freed by a British anti-slavery squadron and taken to Freetown, Sierra Leone, where they settled for a while before returning to Abelkuta, where they gave birth to Herbert Macaulay's father, Thomas Babington Macaulay. Herbert Macaulay's father, Reverend Thomas Babington Macaulay, founded and became the first principal of the Church Missionary Society, CMS Grammar School, in Lagos, Nigeria's first and oldest secondary school, on June 6, 1859. Until he was five, Macaulay was taught at home by his mother, Abigail. In 1869, he enrolled at St. Paul's School, Breadfruit and Christchurch School, Itafaji, for his primary education. In 1877, at the age of 13, he gained admission into the CMS Grammar School, which was then at the end of Broad Street in Lagos, where his father was the principal. Two months later, on January 17, 1878, his father died of smallpox. Herbert Macaulay left the school in 1880, and according to his school record, he was astounding in English, logic, mathematics, and Latin. In September 1881, at only 16, he was appointed a clerical assistant and indexer of Crown Land Grant in the Colonial Public Works Department in Lagos. Within three years of his appointment, he was promoted as a draughtsman and clerk of Crown Land Grant. Macaulay was then awarded a Colonial Government Scholarship in 1890 for further studies in England in civil engineering and surveying a first of its kind in those days, which exposed him to the genteel British way of life and liberal democracy. From 1890 to 1893, Herbert Macaulay was in Plymouth, England, studying not only civil engineering but architecture and surveying, including railway surveying. On December 5, 1893, Macaulay became the first Nigerian to qualify as a civil engineer and was admitted as a member of the British Institute of Civil Engineers, member of the Royal Institute of British Architects, as well as a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society. However, when his lecturer at Plymouth, Mr. G. D. Bellamy, recommended Macaulay for further training in civil engineering, the colonial government in Lagos denied him that opportunity. On his return to Lagos, the government made him a surveyor of crown lands in Lagos. However, he soon became dissatisfied with the conditions of his employment as he was put on a salary scale of 90 to 150 pounds per annum while a British civil servant junior to him in the same department earned 250 pounds per annum. Thus, in 1898, after only five years in government service, Macaulay decided to go into private practice as a licensed surveyor, architect and civil engineer. He never worked for the government again. He was only 34 years old. On his own, Macaulay struggled in the early days to find success as the colonial authority made sure he did not get any government jobs and only a handful of Africans were rich enough to engage and pay him for his professional services. Although he designed very few important buildings in Lagos, 
like Alex Taylor's house on Victoria Street, Henry Carr's house on Tinubu Street, Akinola Maja's house and the Doherty Villa in Campo Square, Macaulay was constantly in financial distress. He was also an executor of the estate of a family dependent from which he was accused by the colonial government of misappropriated funds when he was found guilty of improperly taking a sum of £350 from the estate of one Mary Franklin, a freed slave who had named him as an executor of her will in 1912. Macaulay argued that he used the money to put off debt owed by Mary's estate but his claims were dismissed and he was sentenced to two years imprisonment in July 1913. While many sympathized with him because of the extenuating circumstances of his large extended family, this event meant that he could never become a candidate for public office for life. Barred from elective public office, Macaulay made his mark in politics through journalism, political organizations and various advisory capacities. Between 1910 and 1927, he was a frequent contributor to the Nigerian Chronicle. In 1927, Macaulay joined forces with his friend Dr. John Akinlade Colcreek, a physician and politician, to buy the Lagos Daily News, the first daily newspaper in British West Africa, founded in 1925. Macaulay decided on the political tone of the paper. This provided him a platform for his battles against the government and his African political opponents. Herbert Macaulay would also go to prison again in 1928 at a time when he had become a serious opponent of the colonial government. Macaulay was responsible for the reports and editorial views of the Lagos Daily News, a medium which he used to fight his political battles. He soon got into trouble with the British when the paper reported a story that the car which was to bring the king of Lagos back from exile in Oyo would be blown up by his opponents. It was a rumour and the colonial government felt that the publication was an incitement to fuel existing tension within the colony. Macaulay served six months in prison without any option of fine. After his release from prison, Macaulay took a somewhat more cautious line but his writing remained highly critical. He continued to publish his newspaper until 1938. Herbert Macaulay's popularity as a political leader led to the forming of the Nigerian National Democratic Party, NNDP, in 1923, the first well-organized political party in Nigeria and British West Africa. Its motto was, the safety of the people is the greatest law. Its candidates won all the elective seats in the Nigerian legislature between 1923 and 1938. For fear that the government might take action against him, Macaulay refused to hold any party office until the 1930s. But in Lagos, there was no doubt he was the driving force and real power behind the scenes. He maintained close ties with the first executive councils and was almost always present at NNDP public meetings. Furthermore, he had extensive links with the masses of Lagos through their traditional popular associations, particularly the Market Women's Union and many vocational unions. He encouraged market women and elite women to take part in party activities, including speaking at its meetings. With his control of the party, Macaulay was able to some extent exert some influence on some issues that came before the legislative council, such as the poll tax, the building of a new cemetery for Africans at Aton Ota, present-day Ogun State, and the Lagos Railway construction. When the colonial government decided to control market prices during World War II, Macaulay supported the opposition of the market women to the idea, arguing that the government could not seek to control what it did not supply. Ironically, Macaulay encouraged Lagosians to contribute and support the British colonial government immensely during the war. When the National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon NCNC, was formed in 1944, Macaulay, now 80 years of age but physically strong and mentally alert, was elected the party's president, and Benjamin Nnamdi Azikiwe 
who would go on to become the first president of independent Nigeria, became its first secretary general. In 1946, the colonial government proposed a new constitution for Nigeria, but led by Macaulay, the NCNC and other nationalists rejected the proposition. They argued that it did not go far enough in granting responsible government to Nigeria and that the locals had not been fully consulted on its provisions. At the meeting in Global Hall in Lagos on April 11, 1945, it was decided that an NCNC delegation which included Azikiwe, the head of the delegation, Mrs. Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, Prince Adeleke Adedoni, Dr. A.B. Oloronimbe, Alhaji Inua Wada, amongst others, be sent to London to convey the party's reservations to the proposed constitution. We have come to the United Kingdom as delegates of the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons, chosen by our people, in order to demand for a more democratic constitution, to modify four laws affecting our lands, minerals and chiefs, and to request the British government to grant us more political responsibility to enable us to take an active part in the management of our affairs within the framework of the British Empire. A tour of the provinces was planned from April 8 to June 5, 1945, to raise funds, a total of £13,500 for the proposed trip to London. But it was while Macaulay was on tour in the northern provinces in Kanu, leading the NCNC delegation, that he suffered an acute attack of rheumatism and had to return to Lagos, where he was treated by Dr. Olorunimbe, his personal physician and political associate in the NCNC. He died on May 7, 1946. He was 81 years. The Lord Bishop of Lagos, the Archbishop Leslie Gordon Vining, officiated at Macaulay's funeral service held for him on May 11, 1946 at the Cathedral Church of Christ Marina, after which he was buried at the Ikoi Cemetery. Huge crowds estimated between 100,000 and 200,000 turned up in the street to mourn him and all markets were shot for two days. As is customary among the Yoruba, when a distinguished leader dies at an advanced age, his funeral became the occasion for a prolonged celebration of life well lived and public service well acclaimed. In December 1898, the year he left the civil service, Macaulay got married to Caroline Pratt, the daughter of an African superintendent of police. Unfortunately, the marriage came to an end with Caroline's sudden death in August 1899. Macaulay vowed never to remarry, but he had mistresses with whom he fathered 16 children, one of whom was Oged Ogedengbe Macaulay, a member of the Zikist movement who also took after him with his own militant brand of politics. Likewise, Professor Babatunde Kweku Adadevo, a former Vice-Chancellor of the University of Lagos, was a grandson, while his daughter, Dr. Stella Ameyo Adadevo, the woman who stopped the Ebola epidemic in Nigeria in 2014, was a great-granddaughter to Macaulay. Some of Macaulay's friends and political contemporaries were Dr. Henry Carr, the first African inspector of education and later the first African resident of the Lagos colony, John Otumba Payne, the first African registrar of the High Court, Arthur Kirsten, German consul and an accomplished pianist, Dr. J.K. Randall, Dr. C.C. Adini Jones, Dr. J.A. Colcreek, Dr. Moses da Rocha, Candido da Rocha, Dr. Akinwade Savage, Barrister Eric O. Moore, Egerton Shingle, Adeyemo Alakija, Bright Wilson, Kitoye Ajasa, and Alimotu Belewura. Herbert Macaulay was a great socialite and found solace from his political travels in music. He had learned the violin in the UK, even obtaining a certificate in it from the Trinity College of Music in London and was quite good at it. Although a Christian, the son of an Anglican priest, Reverend Prada T.V. Macaulay, and grandson of an Anglican bishop, S.A. Crowther, 
He practiced various forms of black magic and divination. He embraced the Adamu Orisha in Lagos and showed a keen interest in African traditional medicine to protect himself and his large family. Many streets and monuments have been named after Macaulay in both Abuja and Lagos. In 1972, a ship Habat Macaulay of the Nigerian shipping line was named after him. The Habat Macaulay Library in Yaba, Lagos is also named after him. In addition, his portrait featured on the defunct Nigeria one-nara notes and coin.